What is it like being a Jamaican in Montserrat? Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, the founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the World, I talk to Angela Greenaway, a Jamaican living in Montserrat. Welcome, Angela. How are you doing? Thank you for your welcome. I'm doing quite good, thank you. Yes, good. it's good to be here. <laughs> good, good, good. Love the picture in the background. Um, I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a typical Jamaican scene. Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should say though, it's a typical Caribbean scene. So oh. yes, with, with the experience that I now have in the wider Caribbean, it's a, a market typical Caribbean scene. So but yes, this is Jamaican for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you and I were, were mentioning earlier, you know, we either have uh, that one, the one with the bus, and which yes. was the other one you had mentioned? Um, um, the house, you know, the traditional old-time Jamaican house. Yes. Um, With one or two children in the yard, you know. So, yeah, there's that one as well. That's quite popular. I'm sure all viewers are saying, yeah, I have that one, or I have this <laughs> one. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so let me start at the top. Yes. Which part of Jamaica you're from and which high school are you representing? All right. So um, my where I'm from in Jamaica is very interesting because I was born in a small village in Hanover called Askinish. Don't know how many people know of um, Askinish in Hanover. And uh, I lived in Westmoreland in Lambs River, but then we moved to Kingston. So at heart, I'm a country girl, and I would I will I'll tell everybody I'm from Jamaica country, but I grew up in um in the in the corporate area, Kingston and St. Andrew, um, lived in Vineyard Town and in Havendale, and now my, my mother lives in Sto in Stony Hill. So okay. yes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm from Jamaica country. Um, so in terms of schooling, I would have gone to um, Vass Prep very briefly, Mona Prep, um, and then, then to the best girls high school, St. Andrew High School is oh. my school. So I'm an Andrew's old girl. So, and I think you went to JC, so yes. we are brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I felt something there. Now, when you were, when you were right. there, I felt something. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Andrews through and through. Yeah. Good, good. So, how did you get? Tell us a story of how you you got to um, Montserrat. That great institution that is called the University of the West Indies. Um, I went to the University of the West Indies and I met my husband, who is from Montserrat. And so I um, followed him after we got married. We, we lived in Jamaica for a year and then I went to Montserrat, made Montserrat my home. All right. Yes. And, and so, so tell us about Montserrat and the people. We'll start with the people. Tell us about the people. A lot of people tend to assume Caribbean we're all the same, but you know, we have our different quirks. We have our different culture. We have our yeah. different, you know, where we interact. Um, um, so tell us about the people in, in, in Montserrat. In Montserrat. Well, the thing is that the, which is why I emphasize the, the Jamaica country part and the fact that, you know, I'm a country girl at heart because Montserrat when the first time I went, reminded me of one of our smaller um, areas in Jamaica country. And I used to um, compare Plymouth, the capital city in Montserrat, with um, like Falmouth or one of those, you know, small seaside Jamaica towns. So um, it's very much like Jamaica country. It's very mountainous. It's very green. It's lush, um, lots of um, you know greenery and that sort of thing. And of course, now since um, 1995, we have the volcano, which mm. um, is that you know main feature, which would have changed um, the terrain somewhat. 
but it has not taken away from the, the greenness and the, the, the just very lush na nature. It was called the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean. And um, it is really that very, very green and lush, very uh, mountainous. Okay. Yes. And, and the people, the nature of the people are they... very, very friendly, very, very friendly. And, and, and also the, the, the accent is not very far from the Jamaican accent. So I will be told that, yes, I don't have a Jamaican accent and I, you know, I, I, I speak more like a monstration, but, um, if you're overseas, it, it's, it's not that different between the Jamaican and, you know, some, some of the islands have a very distinct accent, very distinct from the Jamaican one. Right. When the Montreal accent, accent is not, um, is not overly distinct. Um, of course, yes, there are nuances because when I went there first, there were persons in certain areas that it would be difficult for me to understand because they spoke very quickly. <laughs> and, um, and of course they have their own way of saying things. And um, so, yes, you, 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 but you easily get accustomed, accustomed to it. But it's a very, um, it's a very welcoming society as well. People are generally very so, welcoming. So, you know, I, I don't remember encountering anybody from Montserrat before. Really? Uh, okay. You know, I, oh. I don't remember. I've had friends from quite a few Caribbean islands, but I don't remember ever encountering anyone from Montserrat. And, and so it leads me to this question. Mm -hmm. um, do they have uh, a second language? Um, no. You know, I, I, no. I, I, I choose to call Patois a second language. Some people Well, know. okay. <laughs> so do they have a, a, a Patois? Or do they, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, they, they, of course, they do. Um, they, they would have their own way of saying things, their own, own um, colloquial expre expressions. So certainly, yes, they do have oh. their own patwork, yes. Okay, good. Yes. And mm -hmm. I, I, um, I, you know, there's another island I used to say, they sound like Jamaicans, but they i was corrected by someone saying no they don't think so and they live there so i was like all right that's antigua is yeah. that antigua um not an not antigua um what's the island i'm looking for it will come back to me it yes is, but... it's you know oh they're just one of the western islands it will come back to me in a minute okay right right because antigua of course is our gateway to the world because we have to go to antigua to get literally anywhere. Um, but Antiguans also sound um, very much like Jamaicans. Okay, okay. And and you, you mentioned a, a point here in terms of gateway to the world and, mm -hmm. and Montserrat. Do they grow anything really? Because I know the volcano is, is there and I know things grow with that volcano <laughs> um, soil but is everything brought in? And with that also, does it, is the cost of living high because things may be, are always brought in and not grown? Right, so um, complex question. <laughs> we, we, grow, we grow a lot of our day-to-day um, -day, um, food items. So a lot of that is grown and over the years there has been a push towards greater self-sufficiency. But yes, there is a, also quite a bit of importation. Um, you know, we, we didn't really cover the size of Montserrat and the size of the population. We're very small. So we, I, I tend to use 5,000 as the number of persons that live there. But it's okay. really for you know, it's like you know four thousand eight hundred and and something, and of course that's that's because after the the volcanic eruption, about half the population would have migrated to the UK and you know other parts, and since then we have a lot of persons coming in from other islands. We have quite a lot more Jamaicans there now than when I first went there. Um, persons from Guyana, Santo Domingo, and even uh, Haiti, right? Mm. So, you know, it's not 
not a massive population. But I say all that to say that, um, so we tend to, we're, we're self-sufficient in things like eggs, um, the, the local food type things, you know. But yes, we still do import quite a bit of, of our food. Okay. Items. Yeah. We don't, ex and yes, we don't export food items at okay. the moment. Yeah. Okay. And, and so um, I, I, I sometimes hate to compare cost to living, but, you know, it's one of the things that our viewers <laughs> typically, you know, always ask, you know, what's the cost of living like there? Yeah, cost of living, yes, can be high. And um, because, you know, we are, we are in this global environment where, you know, gas prices and the cost of fuel tends to um, make things more expensive. And then right. also because of our, we have certain limitations in terms of our port facilities, airport, airport facilities. So bringing things in will tend to cost a little bit more um, because of, you know, the inconvenience. Um, yeah, we do get container ships, but sometimes that also is expensive and, you know, the costs keep rising. So cost of living is high and uh, the, 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 the wages, um, incomes, you know, we, um, are not are not what? what 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 should i say you know are are not um super <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah yeah so you, we do have persons who 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 will struggle but um let let, let me ask you this question mm -hmm. i i know there's still a connection to um britain yes or uk colony. or yes. uk right you're yes. you're still still a colony does yes. does that help and i never i never meant to go into this this <laughs> set, side yes. of it but does does that help any from a, a economy perspective having knowing that you know we still have the uk that kind of backs things I, I guess is what i would say I, I, again I, it's a complicated question you're not a, 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 i don't know if you're <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh it's um it, it's something that we could spend the whole interview on <laughs> right and so that would have to be a whole separate thing but All just right. to say that um we are almost totally dependent on the uk for our budgetary support um since the since the volcanic eruption in 1995 that would have impacted on our whole economic um e e economic what to say development right and so the uk government supports us right now they finance approximately i think 60 percent of our budget of the of the local government budget and so through taxes and you know other revenue measures, then government earns about 40% of that. So unfortunately, no, I should not say unfortunately. In a sense, we have been, um, it's to our advantage then to be part, to continue to be part of the UK at this point in time. So that's it kind of in a, in a, in a <laughs> nutshell, but of course there's a lot more to it than right. that yes um and and right. they 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 also because of that also you know we are uk citizens okay i i figure it would be a bit complicated and yes. so i will i won't i won't go down that that um rabbit that road. Yes. <laughs> <Right now. laughs> yes. so so talk to me a little bit about the the, the food there um you know, again, we, 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 you know, even us in the Caribbean tend to assume, all right, things may be similar, but I know everybody have their own different style, even the own way they cook the same thing, the same things. Yes. Um, and so tell us a little bit about the food there. 
Well, yes, food is very similar. Caribbean, Caribbean food, of course. But their speciality is a dish called goat water. And it's, it's not like managed water at all because you're using the main meat of the, of the goat itself. And it's more like an Irish stew. There's also an Irish connection in Montreal. And um, so it, it's like a, a stew um, kind of thing. So that's their national dish. That's their main um, speci speciality. Okay. The other things, the other things are very similar. And, uh, you know, I mentioned previously that we have quite a number of Jamaicans living there now as well. And so, of course, we have jerk chicken, we have festival, we have the whole works. So, and um, yes, and we even have um, someone who makes Jamaican patty who, you know, it, it, it is very similar to wow. a tasty or a juicy beef patty. Yes, she, she is, um, she's really very good. Yes. So she, she have a uh, uh, she have a patty shop there or or it's no it's a um it's a it's a it's really barbecue um cent I'm sorry jerk jerk center right. and, okay and, and barbecue yes jerk a jerk center and um she does right. um she does so she does jerk pork she does jerk chicken and right. they, they but also there are other Jamaicans as well who you know are, are following and starting up little barbecue joints and, and different things. So when I went first, I, 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 um, I would not have, you know, been able to, to get Jamaican food per se like this, but no, I can. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's yes. good. That's, mm -hmm. that's really good. So yes. the, the, um, the, Island I was thinking of was Anguilla. All right. Oh, no, no man. Anguillans don't sound like Jamaicans. <laughs> Anguillans have a, a, a distinct accent, um, similar to maybe like the Cayman accent and the St. Kitts accent. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and because Anguillans tend to say things like, oi, oi, <laughs> do something, you know? Right. And that's very typical Anguilla St. Kitts kind of thing yeah the 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 anguillan gentleman that um uh, my friend cliff and we had a, a jamaican um caribbean students club but it was first a jamaican students club and he was right. in it yes and no one knew this i didn't know he was from anguilla he sounded he just was with us and so okay when we found out we were like oh you know well so. maybe he didn't have a deep angolan accent but yes right. you can usually recognize the angolan accent yes right away <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um in terms of you know again some things may be similar british colony and so on has there been anything that you found from a maybe cultural perspective that is kind of uniquely different from from Jamaica, um, and, and maybe it's even in terms of, you know, just even the demeanor of how we may express things, right? We are upfront. We are going to let you know right away we either like you or we dislike you. You know, some of the other Caribbean mm. countries I, I, um, and folks I've interviewed said, no, they're not going to be that bold or they're not going to be yes. that type of way. So have you found any of those little differences and quirk, not quirks, I can't use the word, not the word quirks, but differences. Yes, I mean, clear, yeah, they're not as aggressive as, um, as you know, I, I want to say the typical Jamaican. So it's, it's more, yes, docile, kind of, as I said, very friendly um, kind of people. So, you know, to, to really get them riled up, it will take, something to 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 get them riled up so they're 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 more i don't want to say laid back because that's that's not the word you know you don't want to to, to give that impression that laid back but right. yes more accepting more docile and you know they, they, they're they're not overly aggressive no okay i i find the one thing that tends to rile up my fellow caribbean um friends uh, is is cricket <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. 
cricket. <laughs> yes. Yeah, cricket and politics. Yes, yes, you're right. And politics. Yeah, um, cricket you know, and, 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 and politics, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And um and they're they're no they're no different, yes. They they like their crickets and um they a lot of them they love their West Indies team, even though they are very disappointing. <laughs> but you know, they still um support and um and, and and you know try to be positive and hope for the best with our cricket team. Yes. So um and Montserrat has um had a two well uh, they, they many cricketers who could have made, but the, you know, um I don't know if you've ever heard of Jim Allen. He was um a potential, he was very good um cricketer. And we also um had a a, a cricketer who made the West Indies team um Lionel Baker. So we've actually had someone on the West Indies cricket team. Okay. So yes. I know folks going to throw uh, throw stuff at me. I, I don't follow the cricket as much as I used to. Yeah. So um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. I, I, I don't follow it as much as I used to back back in the day. Um, but I, I growing up, man, I used to en en enjoy it. Um, and then going to cricket matches with my dad, um, you know, used to love that. The good so, old days of Savannah Park, yes. Yeah, um, and the I, excitement, yes. And the cricket pitch is all, all, all about. My dad was on a cricket team where was an uh, older gentleman, and they called the cricket team was called the Dad's Army. You know, like, oh, it was like, a British like, show. I, it uh, like, is a so, sitcom. Yes, it was. It's a British sitcom. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Dad's Army is what they call them. Oh well. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But um. This, but the other unique thing, of course, about Monstrat would be um, the Mighty Arrow, um, the great Soka King of the world. And they're very, very proud of that as well. That, so. that leads me to music. What's mm -hmm. the dominant music on, on the island? Are, are you hearing, are you hearing uh, more reggae than when you first um, got there? Uh, what's, it, what's it like? Yeah, I would think that, yes, I hear more um, reggae. Well, I'm from old school, so I don't know if you can call what the, 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 the trend in music now is actually reggae. I think it's, it's more dancehall or I'm not sure. But, but you, you, you get a wide range, right? And of course, we're in Eastern Caribbean, so Calypso and Soka would be things that you hear quite a bit as well. But um, yes, Arrow is from Montserrat and right. not Trinidad as many people tend to, to think. I've had to um, educate quite a bit of persons <laughs> in my lifetime. So Arrow um, is from Montserrat. <laughs> is from Montserrat and everybody knows hot, hot, hot. Oh, yes. Um, oh, everybody yes. knows the, hot, 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 right? The mighty so Arrow. The, the mighty Arrow. Arrow, the mighty arrow, right? <laughs> and we're all, you know, very, very proud of that. Right. Um, yes. So good. So yeah, so we get the, the wide range of um of, of music. Of, of music, yeah. Steel pan, you know, the whole work. So all of that is there. Yes. So so when people learn, and this probably happened in the early days, I didn't even ask you how long you have you have lived live that month in months oh boy i've been there 37 years oh wow oh wow <laughs> yeah yeah so so when people when you first got there mm -hmm. and people learned that you were jamaican um what would they typically you know what would the response be or you know it wasn't anything for them but what would the response be um well how, how, how should I respond to that? Let me put it this way. Um, I, they, they knew who you were, right? So at that time, the population would have been much larger, like um, 10, you no, know, bordering 11,000 people. Mm -hmm. But when I walked down the road or if I went someplace, people would know that I'm a stranger. 
And they would also, because I remember um, one of my funniest moments was the first time I went to a hairdresser there and I was um, sitting in the chair and uh, I happened to look in the mirror and there was a lady pointing at me and she was, she was, she was, she was basically saying, so I, I could say that is Franklin's wife. So, you know, she was pointing to someone in terms of, well, you know, so this, this is the, the, the person then who, you know, one of their son of the soils got married to kind of thing, right? So um, people knew you were, that you were, you were different um, because yes, at that time, it was predominantly monstration and they could recognize, um, recognize strangers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the, 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 the question, I, I, I really didn't get much questions then in terms okay. of, you know, what okay. I was there. Yeah. Well, well, it's, you know, it's um, kind of, it, you know, as you say, interesting that everybody knows, but not everybody knows everybody, but they're able to, to kind of know that, yeah, you you aren't you aren't one you you weren't you weren't one of us. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as easy now, but right. then it was. Okay. Yes. Let, let me ask you this uh, question because you mentioned in you being there uh, 30, 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. Um, when the volcano erupted in the nineties, I believe you had yes. mentioned, and I, I remember that in the nineties were. Uh, were you affected in terms of your home itself and did people leave I know a lot of people left you know did people a lot of them leave and then come back and rebuild uh, how was that whole dynamic um, you know living on a, a, a volcanic island with an eruption and and also I know I'm putting a, this into a big ball of questions but <laughs> You know, the second part to that is, you know, you live on an island with a volcano at any point in time, like, we, you know, we have seen at other places, it could erupt. <laughs> right, yes. So the volcano erupted in um, 1995 on the 18th of July, to be exact, 1995. And uh, for me personally, I didn't have to move my house because I... I already I lived in an area that's designated as a safe area, but I had my husband's family had to move, and at one point they moved in with us. So we we were impacted by the fact that yes, we had to have family move in with us. So my my in laws had to relocate. Um, at the time, it was. It was strange because of course it's something new happening. And uh, the exodus didn't really start until um, 1997 is when we had a real exodus because on the 25th of June, 1997, we had the unfortunate incident where 19 persons died as a consequence of them being in the exclusion zone. And so the, there was an eruption and they could not get out in time. Mm. And so after that, the British government, because at that time we did not yet have um, full British citizenship because British citizenship happened in, uh, I think 2003 is when the, the, the dependent territories were became um, British citizens, right? So at that time, yeah, we didn't have citizenship. So, you know, we were open to the same immigration rules as, as other persons, maybe not as stringent, but certainly that way. And so they opened up then the, um, the possibilities then for months rations to immigrate to the UK. Other Caribbean islands also accepted monstrations. And so that is when we, and they, they, they had, um, you know, incentives and assisted with the cost. And when you went to the UK, there was um, housing, you know, schooling for children. So there was a special dispensation then for monstrations after that. And so we yeah, literally lost uh, about half 
of the population wow. at that time. I think we probably went down to about maybe 2,800 persons or something like that, you know? Wow. So yeah, it was, you know, it was one of those times where it was difficult. I, 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 I will not um, think, I mean, for me personally, at that time, my daughter was um, about to enter first form for high school. Um, I then had a, my son was five and I had a baby at the time as well. And so, um, you know, lots of pressure because then my, my mother my, was saying, you know, why are you still there? What are you doing there? You know, kind of wow. thing, lots of, lots of things. But I, I worked with government and I was in a position where I could not, it, it would have been difficult for me to leave. And my, uh, my husband also had, you know, an important position. So um, as a compromise, I sent my daughter to Jamaica to school, St. Andrew High School, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and my son went to St. Andrew's Prep. So that sort of, you know, relieved the pressure, but... Um, wow. It was, it was a period where you were sort of um, living day to day, week by week, trying, trying to see what was happening. And, you know, again, you know, because of, of my position in government, you, you, you were wrapped up in the right. in the response in the recovery in the you know rehabilitation because you know we always try to maintain a focus that persons wanted to live on months right and so if you wanted to live on months right then you have to develop it you know and right. so there was that conscious choice that um in spite of the volcano because where the volcano is located um there is a safe zone Mm. So it's, it's not like it's in the center of the island and so the whole island had to evacuate. It was a safe zone, but the safe area was the most undeveloped area in Montserrat. Uh, so, uh. right. So it was, a, it was literally starting from scratch. So, you know, you're, the town, Plymouth, is now a buried city. And so you, you, you have to develop a whole new town um, lots of housing programs, and I, I mean, you know, I'm going just, back into that area where I tell you it would take a whole program. Oh, but, but it sounds like you were there for um, a really ground, some groundbreaking things, yes. some some seeing some historic things of moving folks from maybe one end of the island to another end of the island and one part. That is just amazing, groundbreaking, and really interesting stuff. I, I know my viewers may be like, oh, you get too deep here, but <laughs> I, I love hearing this stuff because you have brain drain. You have some brain drain going on. Yes. And yes. then, no, in between that brain drain, again, it sounds like you're you know, saying, folks, you have to move to this safe zone, which is now just being developed. And then... You may need, you you don't have all that intellect that was there before to kind of help with maybe even the engineering. That that's a whole new series itself. <laughs> it's uh believe you me, it's uh it's a whole new series. And I mean, looking back now because I'm I'm not retired, and so looking looking Congrats. back now, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, looking back now, it's um sometimes difficult to really fathom how we achieved all of that um, because when my my retired colleagues and I you know sit down and talk about it we recognize that you know we, we really we really um, had a, 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 a huge you know mandate on our on our plate and we were working with a lot of uncertainty because it was new the, the, the whole scientific, um, thing to this volcano was new. It, um, but from it has come a whole wide range of um, of, of information and research, new um, um, new equipment. You know, a, a whole range of things to the point where the the, the because we now have a, a, a volcano observatory in Montserrat, to the point where the um, volcanologists, um, different specialists from our observatory 
were able to go and assist in the recent eruptions in St. Vincent. Right, right. Yeah. But wow. Um, wow. Yes. amazing, amazing stuff. Yes. Let, me, let me ask you this question. Um, if I was to visit or my view, myself or my viewers were, was to visit, you mentioned the observatory, um, but there may be some other places of interest or it may even be an event um, that happens there in Montserrat uh, annually or on a regular basis. Yes. What would be that one thing you would say if you were to visit Montserrat, go visit this or experience this event um what would it what would it be well if we're talking about events i would say visit during saint patrick's week you know um covid has has really you know impacted a lot of of of, of the events and activities worldwide but the months that um key event would be saint patrick's week march 17th is a public holiday in St. Patrick's and we have a whole week of celebration there. Wow. And really March 17 commemorates a uh, slave uprising against the Irish planters because there, they had a lot of Irish settlers in Montserrat. So there's that Irish heritage as well, which we have not spoken about. The shamrock being, you know, a key feature in the whole Montserrat culture. And um, so there was this um, attempted slave rebellion on March 17th, which was um, foiled and um, persons were hung and you know, different things. But that is commemorated on March 17th and it's a big cultural activity that has really grown in significance over the past, um, I would say five years. So that would be the main event in terms of thing but if you visit Montserrat you must visit the the buried city of Plymouth because um the volcano being being um the volcano is still active by the way but mm -hmm. it is quiet to the point where where you can actually visit certain okay. places so um the buried city of Plymouth and its environs should would should be a must see if okay. you visit Montserrat, yes, because then one would get to understand. So we, we are like the, the, the very city of Plymouth is, is a modern day Pompeii. Mm. Yes. Wow. Modern day Pompeii, yes. Well, Angela, you have given us uh, education here on Montserrat. You have taken us there and very interesting stuff. Very interesting. So winding down. My, yes. my, my second to last question is this one. You leave Montserrat, you land in Jamaica, and what is the first thing you're doing when you go? And I know you visit Jamaica quite often. What's the first thing you, you typically do when you, you get to Jamaica? Some people it's, are going by this, I'm going to the beach, I'm going to this. Um, again, you're in the Caribbean, so Montserrat is in the Caribbean also. You, you may just say, Xavier, you may even say to me, I get everything in Montserrat. Yeah, yeah. No, the first thing I do is go and buy a tasty patty. All right. <laughs> and I have a tasty patty and some coconut water. I, get, okay. I mean, not that I don't get coconut water in Montserrat, no, I do, but that's the first thing I do. And then, <laughs> of course, um, I will get um, an East Indian mango. All right. Yeah, so my mother knows that once I'm coming, she must find an East Indian mango somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, so the mangoes, they, they, do they um, have the different classifications like we do or not really? they have but they don't have as wide a variety as we do okay right so so they don't have um east indian they have um julie right so yes i can get julie and hairy i can get hairy mango but mm. yes i'm not getting east indian and i'm gonna get a bombay but my favorite mango is an east indian mango all right yeah all right. so right so, <laughs> so folks, that's 
You know, if you're going to Montserrat and you visit Angela, I don't know how you're going to sneak it in, but you'll have a sneak in at East Indian Mango if you're going to go look for her. <laughs> yeah, and that would be hard to do because to get to Montserrat, you have to go to Antigua first. Mm. And then come across the Montserrat because, as I said, Antigua is our gateway. Right. We don't have an international airport. We have a very small airport. And, um, and uh, yeah, so we have to, to come through Antigua. So Antigua is very strict in terms of customs. So you might not, so you might try, but you might not get the East Indian mango true. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna have to eat the, the East Indian mango right there in, in, in yeah, Antigua, right in, in Antigua. front of the custom, right in yeah. front of the custom. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So, sure. my my second to last question, and again, thank you, thank you, thank you, is is this one? How do they say monster? I'm going to mess this up. Monster ration. Monster ration. Monster ration. Monster ration. Yes. How do they do they? You know, we say catch you later, a little more. When we're saying goodbye, we typically greet you. What's the informal way? that they would say, you know, see you later or goodbye, informal, you know, or they, maybe they don't have one. Maybe it's just bye or maybe it's just goodbye. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I guess so. I didn't really, you know, um, think All about right. it. Yeah, right. I, think, I think they would say see you or, or goodbye or later, later. Okay. Yeah, okay. Some, Something so, like that. <laughs> so it's, just, it's just a regular. It's just a regular later. Yes, it's just, it's just a regular later. Mm -hmm. Well, well. final words. Do you have anything for anyone that is even thinking of moving to, mm -hmm. to, to Montserrat? Any final words on that before we we uh, we end with, late, with later? <laughs> with later, right. But just to say that... Um, Montserrat, it's it's a very small island, and so um, if 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 anyone is thinking or you know thinking about something, it's um it's uh well, let let me put it this way: I it is the perfect place to bring up children because it's very safe, um, not much crime. Um, it's one of I think the few countries where you can still leave your doors open. We don't have burglar bars, that sort of thing. And that, for me, you know, is one of the very positive things about Montserrat. And so it's um, small, it's quiet, it's very green, um, very lush. We don't have white sand beaches, but it's black sand beaches. And so if, 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 if you need to go to the beach, then yes. But there are lots of nature trails as well. So it's for those persons who love nature, right? And um, and one of my favorite things is to just sit and on my porch and and look at the the sea the, um, thing because yeah I'm on an island and uh, when I'm away from it I recognize that that's something that I take for granted right mm. that I you know I'm, I'm seeing the sea every day and it it, it it's a it's a calming um, thing but it's a a very peaceful place. Um, Good. Live, barring, of course, the volcano, but yeah. Right, right. <laughs> let, let me ask you this question. How, yes. before, before we end, how yes. long does it take you to travel around the island itself? Um, again, avoiding oh. the, 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 <laughs> unsafe, the unsafe zone or the, the, the volcano area. How long does it take you to travel around? Oh, dear. No, that's going to be an, an, an embarrassing question because people are going to get the wrong impression now of size, right? But let me say this. from um, If you want to get from one point, the, the furthest point to, of the safe zone to the most northern point of the safe zone, it's not going to take you an hour. Let me put it that way, right? Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, I used to get very strange things you know when they when they think about Montserrat and the size and people used to ask me so if you hit the cricket ball then it's going to fly in the ocean no it's not <laughs> no it's not it's not going to drop in the ocean i mean you know size right. is relative when you're you're on the island then it does not feel small i see yes I see. and 
So, you know, we don't have traffic jams. We don't have traffic lights. And um, it's not going to take someone an hour to get to work, you know, bumper to right. bumper traffic kind of thing. So, it, you know, it's like that. It's like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> good information. Yes. Angela, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're um, welcome for sharing your story and just telling us a little bit about Montserrat. I know I, I kind of went off in some of the areas, but it was great. And you That's were okay. there for um, an amazing time. So as they say in Montserrat. Later. Later. Show us some love now. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a video.